One of the toughest jobs in the hunting industry is guiding. With client expectations and a determination to succeed, it takes a lot of time and patience to master this craft. Dustin and Hagen are mixing it up this week from normal clients to a family member. We're going to go drive around the spot and stalk and see if we can't find one of these deer and, and make a move on them. Does this add pressure to get it done or provide a nice change in the hunt? I think that anytime you can do anything with your family, especially in today's time, it's a good thing because there's so many distractions nowadays where people don't talk and pay attention to each other. You can literally live under the same roof and not know a darn thing about the people that live there with you. You know, anytime that you can go and be with your family in the outdoors, may it be hunting, fishing, or whatever you're doing, you know, that's a win, that's a plus, that's a bond that is unbreakable. All right, special day. We are at school in the pickup line right now to pick up Miles from school. He has no idea that we have planned to be doing some deer hunting the next few days. He's been talking about it all year. When is he going to get to go hunting? And here lately, we've actually been talking about, I don't know when we're going to have time to do it. We're going to run out of time because Christmas is coming. We're going on a ski trip, but we're fixing to pick him up and he has no clue that we're going hunting this season. Jim come over. No, we got something planned for tonight. Oh, great. You know what's planned? No, not at all. Huh? Well, maybe. What do you think's planned? We're going hunting. We're going hunting? For what? I have no clue. What do you want to hunt for? I don't know. The big nine? The big nine? Let's go get him. Yeah. You know, Miles has, has been fortunate to grow up on this big ranch. And he's already shot turkeys and pigs and a bobcat and he shot multiple deer already. I mean, he shot his first deer at five years old. And you know, he's got to be around hunting every day of his life. So it's in him, he loves it. And it doesn't matter what we're hunting, whether we're hunting coons with his coon dog, or we're out hunting ducks on a pond or whitetail. He's, he's ready, he'll go hunting every day and he'll skip school every day to go hunting. He loves it. Well, you know, we're, we're fixing to go hunting. Miles is in there getting changed. He's just getting out of his school clothes, and, and this is just kind of cool. Last year, this is that big elk that Lacey shot in New Mexico, and I just got him back from the taxidermist, and, you know, to get to bring him back and, and put him in your house, you know, some people think, you know, it's kind of bad to just hang up a trophy or something, but to me, this is a memory and as long as we're sitting here and anybody that comes by, we tell them the story about how, you know, we hunted him and, and how awesome of a day we had on the mountain. And just kind of, you know, let you reflect on that and remember the stories of the hunt. Typically with Miles, I like to hunt in a blind. It allows for him to have time to calm his nerves, make sure he's you know, got a good rest and all of that stuff. So, you know, I'd like to send a blind with him, but he is getting a little older. And last year we spot and stalked the deer to where I think he can do that. So we're gonna cover some ground and we've got a few bucks that we're looking for, but they're far apart. They're not, we're not gonna see them in the same area. So if we sit in one spot, we limit our chances of seeing them. So we're gonna go drive around, spot and stalk, and see if we can't find one of these deer and, and make a move on. This segment is brought to you by Mellon Creek Outfitters, Texas free range hunting at its best. With a 110,000 acre ranch and 3,000 square foot lodge, clients can hunt deer, hog, turkey, predators, and more. Mellon Creek Outfitters, raising standards, not fences.
like that. Smoking. <laughs> I was quiet because I thought another one might stop. You could get another one. Hey, you act like you've done that a time or two before. I have. Well, guess what? Yeah. You got to skin this one. Cause I say we don't skin it. Well, how else are you going to eat it? I hate. Why do we shoot pigs? I mean, look at all this. Tearing up our plates. That's a very good point. This is why we shoot oh, pigs right God. here. You can see this is fresh rooting that they just were doing as we shot Check this pig. So where'd you, where were you aiming? Nick. You get him right back here in the butt. Calling it next shot. Huh? Next shot, I'm calling it. Well, you got Flip him over. Find, show me where you shot it. Next shot. You can hit him right here. Well, not in there. Right? I said next shot, called it, bud. <sighs> Good shot, man. Called it. Hey, that's next shot, flip him over. Well, we're out here deer hunting. The new time Miles sees a pig, it turns into a pig hunt. Miles, I, I've gave him the job to, to be on pig patrol and, and he likes <laughs> it. Continuing the search into the evening, Dustin catches a break and spots one of the bucks they're hunting feeding in a field. All right, guys, listen. We just found the buck. There's a bunch of deer out here. You know, we had a failed stalk earlier that didn't work, but we just found an old 10 point. He's super old. Miles, you've never I shot I really wanted to shoot him. You know, we drove by him. Miles saw him. He liked him. We're going to try this stalk again, and it's not easy because of all these deer out here. Let's be real quiet. Okay. He's up here a couple hundred yards, and yeah. let's sneak down here and see if we can't get a shot, okay? Let's go. to turn a little. But I'm gonna click her on fire. Just give him some time. He doesn't know we're here. How solid do you feel, huh? I'm solid. You're really solid? Mm -hmm. Okay, I want you to put it right behind his shoulder, okay? You ready? Yeah. Okay. Shoot him when you're ready. Oh, you hit him. You hit him, he's going over there. Just walk to the side of the thing. Just get up. Get on him. In case he stops again. Might give you another shot right there to follow up. Boom. Hey, he just dropped. Oh hey. my gosh. Hey. He finally got a buck. Let's you go look got, at him. You just, you just got a 10-pointer. I think oh this deer is older than you. He probably is. <laughs> he's not the biggest buck in the woods. I want to go look at him. But he's definitely old. Let's go look at him. You ready? You want to go see him? Let's go. This segment is brought to you by Mellon Creek Outfitters, Texas free-range hunting at its best. With a 110,000 acre ranch and 3,000 square foot lodge, clients can hunt deer, hog, turkey, predators, and more. Mellon Creek Outfitters, raising standards, not fences. Oh. Huh? Yeah, it's giant. He's giant. Oh my gosh. I just shot a monster. Heck yeah. I don't know where I shot him. Dude, I let's get him out of here. Heck yeah. No. I just smoked a big old deer. Big old 10 pointer. You know? Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the body on that yeah. sucker. Oh man. Oh my gosh. 
Uh, what do you think me. about that? A monster. <laughs> Heck yeah. Well, Miles has shot a lot of deer before. Well, not a lot, but he's probably shot more than most eight-year-olds. To see you get excited to shoot this one is just as cool as when you shot them bigger deer. This deer is a, a post-mature buck. I mean, he's old, and that's a good deer to get out of there. That's your first 10-point. Hey, we got him. He's be going home with us. What's your favorite part about shooting a deer? The back strap. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Watching Miles grow up and, and watching him learn from everybody around him, you know, he's, he grows up in a hunting camp. So you know, he picks up on little things and, and I enjoy teaching him and passing on some of the knowledge that I have. And that's what my job as a dad is, right? I mean, I'm supposed to show him things and, and teach him things and let him figure out some of them on his own. It's no different than a teacher in school teaching their, teaching kids how to read and write. I'm just teaching my kid how to do a lot more fun stuff than reading and writing. We're hunting and killing. How are you? How are we gonna cook it up? We're frying it. Frying it up? You heard it, Miles. He likes fried backstrap mashed potatoes and corn. Now it's time to see if guide Hagen Watkins can get his wife Hannah on a good MCO buck. He has a special one in mind that he knows she will love. You know, Hannah didn't really hunt much before um, we started dating, and, and I don't get a, a lot of chances to hunt with her, so the chances that I do, I, I value. I really do enjoy getting to hunt with my wife. It's always fun. Leading up to this week, I had a, a very unique and very particular deer in mind that I, I wanted to get her to kill. It was just a nine point with double drop tines. It was a super post mature deer. For whatever reason, he ghosted on us. I mean, he, he was there pretty much all year. It was pretty, pretty patternable until we decided we were gonna try to hunt him. And I don't know where he went, but he sure disappeared on us. At that point, we decided that we were gonna have to jump ship and go find another mature deer that, you know, would fit the criteria of deer we were looking for, kind of in that management buck class, without question, old enough. Um, we, we weren't gonna risk going to make a mistake just to, to go shoot a deer. So, there's a, there's a scenario down here that looks like this across the middle of the pasture. It's kind yeah. of open around there. And we'll walk down here. It's like 300 yards. We'll walk down here and we'll try to find a little bush or something. We can get by and we'll okay. open it and rattle. See if there's anything in here. See if we so, when we rattle, As we had hunted the last couple days and not really had any luck, we knew that we had another deer that was coming to a, to a watering hole pretty regularly and on the edge of a field. And I, I figured at this point we were running out of time. Our best option was just to go sit tight at this watering hole and wait on this deer. Brush blind, found some shade to sit in here. We're just gonna hang out. 
I think this is our best bet being that it's 80 degrees in the middle of December. They're gonna be thirsty. For sure, they ought to come to water. Yeah. I think we'll just hang tight. There's a lot of deer in these fields. I mean, we ought to have a fun sit and just yeah. hang out and look for a big old mature buck. I mean, there, there's a couple in here that I know of. There's probably a bunch that I don't know of. We'll hang out while we'll I'm good on it. Well, this is your favorite pasture, so. I love the park. I'm lucky to be able to be on it. Great behind the shoulder. I caught myself jerking, but then I said to I stopped. I'm not sure, but I think we ought to give him about five minutes. Okay. And you should probably put your shoes back I on. Think that I had no idea that you had Indian in you. <laughs> Barefoot Mohican sneaking. Did I really make a good shot? This grass is so tall. Fresh blood. I can still kind of see. I could see him through his trail and just disappear. He must have came and did a. Did you see him? Oh my god! <laughs> I never really told Hannah quite what caliber of deer we were looking for, and I, I knew she'd be thrilled with it once she saw him. So to see her reaction once she actually saw this deer, was, it was pretty exciting for me. <laughs> I just get so excited. Look at that big old bladed jacket. I know, that is so cool. Oh my gosh. Wow, this is awesome. Thank Good you. job, man. Thank you. Oh my god! To see a deer with mass like this on the melon, that's pretty cool. He does have good mass. Oh my god, I love him. This was so fun. I just was thinking like, this is not going to work out when we're sitting there. You think oh. he got stuck with a bad guide or what? I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's always special when other women are in camp and you get to share hunting stories like that and to see their excitement and to be able to share that connection with other women.
The importance of doing things like this is just to take advantage of being able to spend quality time with your family and, and really whether it's indoors or outdoors, I don't know that that necessarily matters, but for us we like being outdoors and, and that's where we can get away from everything, let everything go and, and just enjoy what's out there for us to, to soak up and be thankful for. You know, it's, it's a great time to just let everything that's going on in, in, the, in your inner world go and just really enjoy what's out and, and beyond that. Heavenly Father, we would like to pause and give thanks for these things that so often get taken for granted. We know that none of this would be possible without your infinite wisdom, mercy, and love for all of us. We thank you for the countless blessings you give us and ask that you show us daily how to live our lives according to your will. We also ask that you guide our nation back toward your desires. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen.